study how this rhythmical structure starts emerging out of nowhere. It's a little bit of embodied knowledge. So the origins of Girl Directedness project is a project funded by the Dumbleton Foundation. The basic assumption of our project on the origins of Girl Directedness is that that origin is really the origin of self-maintaining systems. That means that different initially independent components start interacting in such a way that they stabilize that interaction, that they endure, that they persist in that interaction, so they become self-maintaining. So we try to look at the science of this by developing a model, and in a, in a specific way, so something like a loop of self-creation is formed. And then the next one, and then there will be new ideas that I want to hear. And these loops is, are what we observe to form systems that can be called living systems. So these living systems are the basic units of life and in our model, in our language, are the basic unit of purpose. So what we can call purposeful is what is able to first of all implement this ability of exist through their own processes. Welcome to Emerging Signals. <laughs> So the whole idea of the symposium was, let's try to do the experiment with people. Let people interact without any a priori rules and let's see whether some kind of a goal-directed system would emerge. That's to say, let's see whether these people will now coordinate their actions. And it just so happens that play has this amazing capacity of being the system, or being systemic, or being like an algorithm, or being like a self-organizing system. When the idea first came up to make a, a symposium about self-organization and about the origins of go directedness to me, it was obvious that we should make the symposium itself self-organizing. It, to me, it seemed like the the, the most conceptually compact way of, of thinking about self-organization and experiencing self-organization. Oh, 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 That's why art for art's sake is important. That's why play for play's sake is important. Even in, even in a symposium, so even when we make a symposium on self-organization and play, it's also important that play just is allowed to exist on its own terms. Like, it doesn't always have to be an illustration of self-organization. It is anyway an illustration of self-organization if you start to think about it and look at it. But it will become truly interesting when, you, when, you, when it finds its own power, right? When it finds its own inner meaning, its own inner um, momentum. That's when it will start to take off. And then those will also be the moments when you'll go, aha! Now I, I've seen something new now in play, and I've seen something new in self-organization, and that's now when you learn something about self-organization. I think that one of the very valuable things that I found at the symposium in general, but specifically in the game of the squares, was um, the element of play mixed with sort of Mm, this chaos that seems in the beginning overwhelming, sort of, or maybe even all these game, or all these little objects, they're kind of overwhelming, kind of like thoughts or something. And then in the game, it was crucial to sort of wait and have this moment of uh, appraisal or just seeing what's going on, and then uh, acting upon that or reacting and really waiting more and then seeing what happens and what emerges out of the chaos. And I think that this was very ref reflective of my state of mind at the time of the that we played the game and also of the symposium in general. Order out of noise or order out of chaos. And the idea is that 
if you inject disorder into the system, if you inject chaos into the system, then it will self-organize more quickly. And the idea is simply more chaos means more different interactions, more freedom to explore many different configurations. So higher probability that one of these configurations will become self-maintaining, self-maintaining in the sense that it has an emergent goal, that it has an emergent objective, to which now all the different agents will start to aim at that objective. I also really like the, the element of play in it because I think very rarely now as an adult, but also children, we get to do things without any kind of rules. But in the end, that's kind of what life, like life is kind of without rules that we just don't realize it because we have all these sub rules kind of in work or in uh, your family or in relationships, how you should engage with people. The society is based on rules, on norms or things like that, that can't be moved so easily. So that are, yeah, that define somehow kind of sacred uh, hierarchy and so on. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Okay, you and your I think playing is, is uh, yeah, is very useful and uh, because it, it can show the, the rules. When we play, we, we can eventually change the rules uh, explore some variant and things like that. There's obviously a way to win. Break the most hearts, find your true love. So soon! <laughs> okay, count three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. Uh, right. Feels great. I broke, I, broke, I broke someone's heart. I broke his heart. I'm sorry. Uh, what Heartbreaker is actually about is capitalism. It's about the suggestion that maybe there's another way where your players can be incentivized to find forms of resilience opposed to just trying to win. So you gotta, you gotta get a true love and you gotta... So how do you win? So now you have a bunch of strangers trying to build alliances and form trust. And they barely know each other. Did you find true love? No. So if nothing happens, it's the nothing thing is that he's not, okay. you're not true love. And that's kind of what this game's about. How do they do that? For me, I love it when you provide a magic circle through a, the construct of some hardened rules and the players in their own ways have new things emerge. New strategies emerge, new etiquette emerge, new forms of play. No, no, you have five more hearts. Next one, you can play five more times. So, no, no. I'm, I'm so happy to be working for love. <laughs> but what gets really exciting for me is this idea of collaboration when strategy and etiquette really merge into a form where players in the, the you know this construct of the prisoner's dilemma like Heartbreaker uses have to build trust. And then what happens is players find a deeper level within the strategy of realizing they're actually having a lot of fun and maybe having a lot of fun together is what this should be about and not being eliminated. And that's when that third area emerges where players every time start to realize if we work together, we can sustain each other. So you have to be the interesting thing about play and being part of a system together is, is that you, you really have that feeling of being that classical definition of emergence, right? <laughs> so you have that feeling of being more than the sum of your parts. There's you're more than yourself when you play. It's, there's something else that enters the room. The, the game has, in scientific terms, properties that the individuals don't have. 
like if I'm playing a game of tag, um, I'll suddenly feel a kind of energy or a kind of joyousness or a kind of laughter that if I was just in that room on my own, I wouldn't feel. Or even if I was with those same people in that room, but our interactions were not of the nature that's elicited by playing the game of tag together, we wouldn't have that laughter. So you, you really get these emergent properties. And you really get this um, state of being, you know, the whole being more than the sum of its parts, which is one of the most, uh, most used definitions of emergence. What's really interesting for me is that it's also a definition of transcendence, that you get to be more than yourself, like we get to be we. Yeah. We, we are, are very, very angry. angry. <laughs> well, well, congratulations. <laughs> and for me that's so beautiful that play actually helps us to understand that emergence, the scientific description of emergence and say the spiritual uh, definition of transcendence are actually the same thing. It's not about doing it theoretically, it's about doing it practically. But the two things go hand in hand, right? So it's the, the theory is also important and also valid. But here it's about like what happens if we really put that into practice and sort of activate this kind of collective intelligence to based on bringing these kind of these, these, these different ideas into relationship with each other. Then what kinds of goals emerge, what kinds of projects emerge, and, 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 and then how do we keep uh, developing that kind, of, um, that kind of intelligence, right? But then we also thought this is not just about the origin of life or about interactions between molecules. This is also about the origin of goals in social systems. People in, initially are individual agents that follow their own rules, and then they come together and maybe they form an organization, a club, a community, a project. In other words, they coordinate their actions and they start working together towards a goal. You know, in a lot of contexts, we have theory about self-organization and cybernetics. And then in a lot of contexts, for example, artistic contexts, you see work which clearly has the traces of emergence or self-organization or cybernetics. But rarely do we find these spaces where the two are connected, where you simultaneously have this real life thing emerging and you simultaneously have this um, deep understanding of of those processes and ways of describing those processes and that finding the kind of the continuity between these two ways of looking at the world or experiencing the world and bringing them into a relationship I think that's quite rare to find those kinds of spaces You not only need to 
simulated with artificial agents somewhere in a computer simulation the way it's typically done. It's also nice if you could do that with real human agents. And those human agents ideally would be in a position where they interact, they self-organize, and like that they develop something that's more than the sum of the parts, something that you can call a goal-directed system. Do we like it? Mm. Yeah? No. Okay, try something else. I think I think we got it. I think I <laughs> Nice. And you can do it at a theoretical level, which is what Claire has mostly done, but you can also try to do it in practice like this symposium did. You brought all these different people with different backgrounds, different expertises together. And something emerged out of that, a community that wants to continue these kind of activities, that is organizing these kind of activities. So it is an example of integration in the real world, rather than just in the world of theory and philosophy. This is what's happening with these birds here, right? They're making these amazing patterns. Actually, what happened in the symposium beyond all my expectations, that means that we not only created a system that maintained itself for the duration of the, com of the symposium, but it continued for months after the symposium because we created a community of people who are continuing to do these kind of things. believe that we cannot create or we cannot understand for real um, the world from a scientific perspective if we do not first explain what is to want to understand the world, what is to be in the world, before having an explanation like physics or chemistry or biology that tries to explain the world outside, I think we should also try to first uh, create an explanation of what is the inside of science. Systems within systems within systems, systems within systems within systems, systems within systems within systems. We're really trying to discover new things and instill new methods of, of, of learning and like equip ourselves with, 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 with new ways of seeing the world. Um, because that's what life's about, right? And, and also we're just trying to equip ourselves to be better, uh, more skilled inhabitants of this collective, you know, spaceship Earth that we're all kind of steering together. So. Systems within systems, 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 systems within